So we are now in the Bricklink warehouse. This is where all of the assembly and the packaging happened for the A-Fold design program, uh, which is now basically over, right, right, right Russell? Right, right. Yeah. Uh, but we've still got a lot of the boxes and parts here. Right, right. What do we got going on? Uh, we're still uh, shipping out some sets uh, to people who are waiting on them. We'll probably do that for about another month. And of course, there's a lot of leftover elements, and we're still working on uh, how to uh, work with those. We can maybe give a little bit of a demonstration of some of these uh, some of these parts. We can take a box off top here. There's just parts everywhere. Never seen so many parts. And these, all of these boxes came from Lego. Is that this was this was packed by Lego, sent directly from Billund. So here we have. This is from. The Isle of Peril, I know that because I know that set. And there's many of these yellow two by eight bricks in here. This is an entire box. Uh, I think it says there's 3,575 two by eight bricks in that box. So <laughs> huge quantities. It's very inspiring to, to people who uh, love Lego to see this the quantities this high. And especially that brick, what, what is that, a, a two by 10? Two, two, two by eight, eight, two by eight yellow bricks. So, yeah, you, you might have one of those, thousand. or yeah, one of those, or two of those in a set that you might get, but the average Lego builder is never gonna see that many of them in one place. Right, right. And here we have an entire aisle of. Uh, of an uh, entire aisle of peril. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> These are stacked on pallets, as you can see, and every box is numbered like they were in the office. And when we go to find, a, uh, a part. We have to find the box that it's in first. They're stacked in pallets right here. But on the other side of here where we can't see right now is uh, the production side and uh, all of those things are stacked in shelves so that people have access to them. You still see some of the names of sets, Hot Shot Carnival. All of the parts came by pallet, so meaning that Every pallet was a particular set. So Lowenstein Castle may have had 30 pallets, for example. Or another one might have had 10 pallets or something. So this is roller coaster <laughs> track, but this is actually a, a pre-packed bag that's gonna go into a set. And this is the first and stage the in packing. We can see this is a, this one right here is from the Skyline Express with all the minifigures in there. And uh, here's some more Skyline Express. You can see the blue. So these are bags that are waiting to be put into uh, sets. This is, this is amazing. This yeah. Is the, sort of the scope of this project. Yeah, and all these pallets Hard used to, to all these pallets used to have, you know, 25 boxes. And all of these boxes over here are mailers? This is the mailer for the extra large box, which is uh, Lowenstein Castle. It's the only one that's this big. So for every one of these that's sitting here, there's gonna be a Lowenstein Castle go in here and then get sent out. Wow. Most of them have already been sent out, but like I said, we still have a few left. Antique fire engine, how about that? Hey. Antique fire engine, so. How hard do you think that is? Well, <laughs> yeah. How well do you know? How well do you know parts? But let's I take don't. a look and see. Uh, this is probably more interesting even than the other one. Oh, oh tires. tires! Oh my goodness, this is amazing. So look at all those tires. Yeah. Look at all these tires. We had we had whole pallets of tires. Oh man. Not just boxes of tires. Well, they we had take, pallets. They take, a while. They take so take much. Room. They take up so much room, and you can tell that it's tires because they're so light. But we still have we still have a number of fire engines to pack, so we'll probably use up most of these. Wow! I oh, think look, so uh, this is a whole a whole pallet of antique fire engine stuff. Right. We try to That's keep amazing. the sets together. This is what's left, probably a fire engine. Now here we have uh, here we have mailers that actually have sets in them. Oh, okay. Wow! Look at that. So here's a Wild West saloon. Number 959, 
brand new. Brand new. Right in the sleeve. It's not going to get newer than that. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> someone's going to get 959. That's right. And if they watch this video. That's right. It's going to become famous now. <laughs> Not old 959. Someday, so someone will be wearing a t shirt that. All right. Says 959. I got 959. <laughs> so, we have to have, we only ship out twice a week, and so we have to store sets that are waiting to go to ship out. And you see, there's a lot of empty space here right now with stuff that's shipped out. But you can take a look, there's a whole, there's a whole bunch of Lowenstein castles that are getting ready to ship out. Wow. Well, this is really something. Here we've got some eight studs. Some of these are what we call customer service sets, meaning that we're reserving these to the side in case we have to send someone a replacement set. And uh, I think we have maybe about 20 of those, maybe a few more. Okay. Um, we haven't started sending them out to people yet, but that's what those are for. And in the end, we might not have to use those. We might just put them in the office when they're done because we can only produce as many as people buy. Right. And if they haven't gotten purchased by the end, by June 30th, then we're not going to sell it later again, but we have to have a supply of ones. Mm -hmm. And what we do in those cases is uh, if someone has a set that got destroyed, we take the number from that set and write it on, an, on another set. Mm -hmm. These ones probably don't have any numbers written on them. Mm -hmm. And so that way they get the exact replacement of the one that they had, not a, a number that's maybe a thousand later or something. Right, right. We try to do everything to, uh, to keep people as happy as possible with their purchase. And for a lot of people, it really matters that they got one of the early ones, you know, like, yeah. the, VI, like the VIPs. I think these are just boxes ready to, ready to go out, yeah. These are all sets ready to go out right now. For whatever reason, they haven't been shipped out quite yet. Well, this is great. There's so there's some stuff going on here that we we're, we're not going to be able to show you due to uh, well privacy of the people working right, here. Right. It's pretty amazing to see this. We got people packing up boxes. We got people sorting parts over there, weighing things, sealing bags. It's pretty incredible, Russell. Thank you so much for showing this to us. Very welcome. And uh, and hopefully we'll see more of the ADP in the future. Yeah. Thank you. This is our new office, and you can see we've got our BrickLink sign hanging up right over here. Uh, we just moved in a couple months ago. Some Lego models we built here, Millennium Falcon in the background. Um, some other little things that I think would be considered custom models. What's really uh, fun about BrickLink is that we have an entire group of people who works on this site. It's about Lego, but it's, uh, it's more than that, too. Um, these are some models from ADP um, that we have that we've taken to conventions. We have them on display here. Um, most notably, over here to the left, we have uh, a Lowenstein Castle original version. There's one with the extension over here, which is sort of rare to see these days. Another so the extension basically on this is, is everything sort of here back? Yes, is that right? that's right, yeah, from there back. And you can see the, uh, there's parts that open up on it. Um, it's really quite a fantastic, uh, quite a fantastic build. Another interesting thing to see, uh, you probably don't see very often, is uh, two versions of, or two copies of the fire engine side by side. You wanna pick that one up, Boone? <laughs> of course, for those who don't know, uh, this is Boone's actual creation here, <laughs> and we have uh, we got more than these. We probably yeah, have five I've of them sitting around. I've never seen so many in one place <laughs> at the same time. Right. This is wonderful. We <laughs> just we build them in our spare time. So we also have uh, a number of these uh, eight studs built. Probably the most of anywhere in the world. A whole apartment complex full of them, um, and fitted on top. Got to do a little modification to make this work, but this is actually. Paul Hetherington's Imagine It Build It. And it just so happens that the the brick, the two by four brick that he made his model out of fits directly on top of this uh, eight studs model. 
That's wild. So they yeah. they both you know probably kind of looked at that that four by four like round that, that can yeah. be created on top, and right. so they they landed on on. Two different ideas, two people I think probably on opposite ends of the world from each other, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, landing on the exact same footprint for a large right. scale 2x4. All centered around the 2x4 brick, which of course fits into the theme perfectly because uh, this whole idea, the AFAL designer program, was done to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Lego brick, namely the 2x4 brick. Um, this is also a famous set right here, Isle of Peril, designed by Jake Sadovich, who also did the uh, famous ship in a bottle. This is a miniature ship, so you can see he's very good at designing ships. This is a masterwork here, the small pieces. So there are real people mm -hmm. behind, behind what, the scenes, what kind yeah. of seems to be the magic of Bricklink, right? Right, right. Yeah. Different kinds, different kinds of workers. Most of us have been involved in ADP, but um, we all have our own regular jobs when uh, when something like that isn't running. And uh, back here is our. This is a new space for us, and one of the great things about it is we finally got a, a table that we feel is big enough to hold everyone for a meeting by itself. Um, we've had this table entirely covered with Lego before, getting ready for conventions. In the uh, Bricklink office, we've, uh, for years now, we've had a lot of parts. I think this may surprise some people, but we actually do have quite a bit of Lego in the office and we use it, we use it a, a lot in this, in, in the ADP program to uh, test build things. We recently built a couple of uh, models, including the Stranger Things. Um, as a company, we like to build things. Officially, we have a building night every every month. We haven't had it for a while uh, except for this last month and uh, so all of our tech people even though they may not be um, AFALs themselves they enjoy building and we build together and uh, it gives us experience with the building process and with Lego itself. It's really amazing how important that is in a in a company like this that's, that's uh, surrounded or that um, is their, their activity surrounds the Lego brick. Mm -hmm. As you can see here, we've got several vintage roadsters. This one is a stripped down version to show what's inside of the car. It certainly takes off a lot of the effect when you don't have the uh, these balloon pieces here as fenders. Yeah, it almost looks like, uh, you know, kind of the, the version that they would race like back in the day at the Indy 500 <laughs> with the wheels, you know, just kind of sticking out. Right, the, the bare bones, the chassis, you know, like the old car chassis. Um, this is a card that actually was included in all the sets. It has a section here from Bricklink and a section uh, from Lego, uh, speaking directly to the people who purchased the set. And on the back here is the uh, list of sets that were successfully crowdfunded. Um, we have a few instruction books that we have left over from test building. Most of these actually are test builds. Um, we wanted to test the instructions and also test each set as it came off each production run um, to make sure we didn't avoid or didn't miss um, putting important things into the set. Uh, and we've been very pleased so far. Here's a here's the special element um, with the card and the little bag that's heat sealed. And we do that right here in the office with our own staff. And about, about how many of those will exist out in the world when this first? You mean these uh, little bricks? Yeah, the, the, the exclusive element. So the exclusive element will be one for every set that was produced. Okay. Um, there are probably a handful of them that won't ever go into set because we collect them, but um, no, there's just going to be one for every set. So it's it's a pretty exclusive element. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you'll see some of these models are, uh, I think I mentioned this before, they're, they're actually glued because we took them to conventions. This Skyline Express, uh, we had a motorized version of that one too. And uh, you notice these stations are actually built up 
a little bit from where they were originally in order to allow the, the train with the motor to pass through. But mm. This is one of the most exciting parts of, of the ADP, um, is to get something like that motorized. All of the, the um, extensions were created by the designers themselves. Oh, so, okay, great. So this was actually developed by um, the, uh, by Jazzle Kraz, who made this, uh, who developed Skyline Express, and he, from the very beginning he intended it to be motorized, but because he de designed it in studio and mm -hmm. we didn't have the motor parts in there, very difficult to test. So, for example, we actually had a version with the motor, and the first time I tried it, came around and and the motor hit the top of the <laughs> of the of the station and wouldn't go through. So, there's been a lot of trying trials um, with that and we arranged the wheels a little bit differently in the bottom in order for it, the train to go more smoothly. So yeah, all of the models had a little bit of tweaking to be done with them. And one of the things we're very pleased with is that uh, the designers actually had a part in that at the very end. When we were finishing the work on the instructions, we, we shared the instructions with them and went back and forth. Uh, and they gave us ideas on what could be changed and some different things. Mm. So we feel like um, from beginning to end, it was uh, something that was centered around the designers themselves. Oh, yeah. And uh, especially well, I, you I being a designer, yeah, you, I certainly, uh, I certainly felt you, that way. you had a uh, part in that too, yeah. yeah. It was a lot of fun to be a part right. of that process. Right. Um, and over here we have uh, something that we normally keep hidden. That's why we have these panels, just because this is more of a warehouse thing. but. This is, uh, these are parts that weren't used and people keep asking us, what are we gonna do with all these parts? We don't have an answer to that quite yet. But uh, these are just some of the parts. You'll see many more of them in the warehouse when we go down and take a look at that. But yeah, it's amazing. You'll find this entire box right here is filled with these leaves. But this entire box is, you just, the average Lego fan never sees pieces in this quantity. Right, right. So it's, it's, it's a different dynamic. Um, in many ways, it makes you appreciate the pieces more when you see the huge quantities of them. And um, this signifies that there's three different kinds of pieces in the one box, as opposed to an entire box of just one piece. And you can see we've got the original Lego sticker that was on there from when it was shipped on the pallet. Uh, this was also on there all the way from, it says Bricklink House Billund. And then this is one of our labels that we stuck. Every box has a four digit number on it so we can identify it. Um, and this is the Lego Element ID. Hmm. As you can see, there's three of them that are printed here because there's three in those boxes. And there are actually, um, there's actually some bagging information that we included on those uh, on those cards too. That's great. And whose whose numbers are those? Are, are those the number that Lego uses? You're talking or? about these uh, yeah. seven-digit numbers. Yeah. These are Lego numbers. We call on Bricklink. We call them PCCs. Okay. And um, part color codes, because oh, they're they're for a specific color. So it's really not. Uh, Lego has a design ID, and then they have the um, this. Uh, this, this ID here, which is for a specific color and a specific mold. Wow. And so, but these are the ones that they use internally. And it's very handy because once you have that, you're not gonna ever get the color wrong or something like right, that. It's, right. it's centered right in there. And they've used those numbers for a very, very long time. And that's but, different from the teeny tiny number that you can sort of spy yeah, inside Yeah, that's, that's, that's the part number. And that's what we, we, we also have that on Bricklink too, so that you can find all the parts of a, of a a particular mold, you can find all the colors of that under one entry on Bricklink. So we have both, and um, we have all this stuff cross-referenced in our in the software system we developed for this too. So you can we can find which box these parts are in. Mm. We can look up the the piece number and find out which of the ADP sets these are in. But at this point, we're wrapping up a lot of things and starting to move on to uh, some different some different projects, but yeah, it's been a thing where the whole company's had to work and, uh, and learn to do some other things more than we normally did.